This is not a way I ever want to start an episode. I just got a call from the marina. Apparently, the boat is sunk. My 30-year-old Italian yacht has sank. It's uh, It's been a kind of crazy snowstorm here. We got some really, really radically low uh, temperatures. So I don't know if that caused a pipe to burst or something to do that, that let water on board. Um, so I am now heading off to the marina and I will update you guys uh, when I find out what's going on. Well, I just saw what's left of the boat and Portland Fire and Rescue is here. That boat is sank, sank AF. That is, uh, that's crazy. That's a crazy, crazy thing to have happen. Here's the first view that I got of this thing. I mean, it is like so sank, it is sitting on the bottom. That is such a sad sight to see. Not sure what Portland Fire and Rescue is gonna do. I gotta try and make sure I don't need to get rescued. This is all ice. I think this is technically closed right now. Oh, that is sad. Sad, sad, sad. Well, it's fully sank. I'd really like to get more flotation on this side. Yeah. Um, oh my God. I'm sorry, when they go, they go fast. Yeah. It's not like we're not watching. No, we're I know, I know. Faucets, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Look at all the boats, we talked about it. I, I have yeah, a feeling I know what happened, but yeah. it's, uh, fuck, yeah. But, but let's... Jesus Christ. About 15, 20 minutes have gone by. I've been uh, doing what I can do to help, which is shovel a pathway, because this is very slippery ice. Um, I definitely think freezing ha could have had a, something to do with this problem. But anyway, so I'm shoveling a path. We got part of a rescue crew here trying to trying to latch on to one of our fenders there because that's tied onto a cleat. We're gonna try and use this other boat as a way to maybe start propping up the front. And overall, they're really thinking that if we can run straps underneath the back from one part of the dock to the next, we might be able to lift it that way. But I guess that is the name of the game for the salvage and the recovery mission is going to be to uh, first step is going to be try and get it, I don't know, maybe all the way out of the water or really far out of the water. Well, it's not going to go all the way out of the water, it weighs too much, but far out of the water to assess where the leak was and then fix the leak. Then we can start thinking about things like pumping and just pump, pump the rest out. Clearly, I don't have a film crew. I ain't got much. It's just me. I'm going to get Oscar down here. He's working on the Mercy Lago right now. I'm going to get Oscar down here and... Uh, We'll document as best as we can, but obviously this is a tough time. Nearly freezing temperatures. We're just doing the best we can. Well, Oscar's here. Uh, we've got a couple more minutes of daylight. The boat is stabilized. Okay, so it is held up on that cleat of the dock going back. That rope is super tight. That rope over there is super tight. That boat is holding right there. And then we're on a fender underwater. You can roughly see right there going down to there. And that gets it from sinking the 20 feet down until it's flat on the bottom. Now, I think we got one more idea before we completely lose daylight. And uh, Marlon has that idea. Yeah. We're gonna try to figure this out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. How long is this strap? 35 foot. I like it. Okay. Shout out to Harbor Freight. Thank you for the tow strap. <laughs> they didn't know it was for boats. The but recovery strap? Yeah, the recovery strap. They didn't think it was for marine use. All right, guys, so we got a game plan here. Our, our big strap, we're gonna go off the front of that boat and off the, off the edge here. And we're gonna try and hook it around the front, work it back, and that'll give us the ability to actually lift even more. Yo, so I've we've got, got the Harbor Freight strap now run from that side under the boat over to there. The problem is the boat is pressed up against the dock, so you can't bring that strap backwards anymore. But this is good progress. While this is going on, I keep thinking, is this thing a lost cause or do we fix this? Like we fixed a lot of things here at BS Rebuild. Is this a restoration project now? <laughs> and I really don't see why not. At its roots, it's a fiberglass body. The fiberglass stuff, it's sealed. It won't hold water. We get this out of the water. Never know. I'll go grab it.
<laughs> this is so treacherous. I mean, it's like ice leading to water that is literally, well, it's not frozen. It's very cold though. So another thing that we got to do to keep everything copacetic is get all of our stuff that floated off the back of the boat and came off. Like there's our table. There were 12 life jackets on the boat, a bunch of different hatches and things like that. You know, we gotta clean all these things up so they're not just sitting in the water. So cause it, it's gonna be a while before a, a full on crew can come out. They gotta send a scuba diver and a full on crew, a recovery crew. And uh, their job is to put bags underneath the corners, lift the boat up, tell the, uh, basically the walls, the walls in the back crest over the water and then they just start pumping as fast as they can. They use these huge pumps and pump everything out faster than the water is going in hopefully. And that uh, that gets the boat back afloat and then they obviously uh, plug whatever the leak is. So it's a, it's a big operation. It's gonna cost thousands and thousands of dollars, but it, it no matter what we do, restoration or not, it's something that has to be done. So once we get this thing, we got hung up on the antenna and the fender. Once we get it fixed and back around it, we'll be in good shape here. All right, we got it around the antenna, and that is our that's our line. Uh, yep, ratchet strap solved everything. I got it. We're almost there. Almost there. It's gonna be interesting to see how much pressure. Uh, yeah, if we can get any lift off of this. Well, it's starting to bob around. Well, I can't tell if the boat's bobbing around or the water is. One of two. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, guys, but today was my birthday. <laughs> so that's a, that's a thing. So Oscar, first, uh, first thoughts before we get the boat back out of the water or do anything. I mean, this boat's had quite an interesting story on the channel already. Yeah. <laughs> Probably lends itself to restoration, right? I think so. And I think I, I enjoy working on the boat if the weather is nice. Yeah. You, you also, I think you enjoy working on the boat, right? It's fun. The boat's fun. Yeah, it's different. It is very expensive to keep it in storage. So we're going to have to, well, yeah, we're going to have to strategize that one a little bit. Uh, this is going to be a two person job. I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm just at home editing this video and I'm watching it. I just, before we go over this point right here, I just want to take a second out to thank the, uh, the Marina and the staff at the Marina, uh, for helping me out so much in such a tough time. So they, they went completely above and beyond to, um, basically secure the boat from continuing to sink they they took action the second they realized something was going on they let me know and then they jumped into action and did absolutely everything in their power uh to stop it from sinking uh successfully keep it from continuing to sink because if nothing would have been done this would have been on the bottom of the river and that raises the costs of everything going forward like astronomically so it's a huge save and uh, they put forth a lot of work in dangerous and miserable conditions so uh, thanks thanks to them for helping us out so much all right back to it all right guys well you can see the weather has cleared up so the boat went down on thursday friday i spent all day arguing with the insurance company long story short right now the insurance company and i have a pretty strong disagreement and they are trying to do what insurance companies always do and basically pay as little as possible which ends with me getting just absolutely hosed and i don't know which episode i'll get into it but i made some personal mistakes with the insurance as well um the short summary of that is i i didn't uh get the boat reassessed after we upgraded all the engines and did all the upgrade work so you know as we talked about in the financial episode of the breakdown on the boat i spent like a hundred thousand dollars on the boat and um well, the insurance company wasn't aware of that, so they didn't. We, we didn't have a different valuation on the boat. So that's that's my fault. I'm not really upset about that. But there's other stuff that the insurance company should be covering, and they're they're really not. So the next steps um, are very expensive, um, in my opinion, like really really expensive. So we got to get these uh, we got to get these done, and I want the insurance company to help out, and they're basically refusing to help out. So it's like a double whammy. Uh, anyway, so. That was my Friday, arguing with insurance companies. Saturday was working with recovery crews on the phone, mainly, stuff like that. Sunday, the same deal. Um, finally had something locked up Sunday. They needed Monday to get their gear together. And today is Tuesday and we're back at the boat and we're supposed to be getting it out of the water, um, but there's, there's nobody here. So 
All right, guys. Well, lots of lots of good news. One thing is, is no chemicals are coming out of the boat. It's been three days. Obviously, you can see we've got our protective like boundary here, but no chemicals are starting to come out of the boat. That's fantastic. That's really good just for everybody because that's the huge liability here, right? So that's awesome. There's like, yeah, I'm not going to jinx it, but that's good. And then the, the equipment and the diving crew and the people are starting to show up now so we can start getting to work on refloating this boat. Diver is about to go in the water. They're gonna get some ropes around the prop shaft, both of them, hopefully, and then bags on the prop shaft to start lifting the back. I got no clue what they're planning on doing with the front, but they do have a come along attached to that pole right there. So might have something to do with it. A lot of you guys might be wondering right now, like why aren't we doing this ourselves? Why didn't we even give it a shot or anything like that? Um, it really kind of comes down to uh, we're not we're not allowed to this marina um has uh it, it all comes down to a bunch of insurance stuff right insurance coverages and who has liability and if we were to uh unalive ourselves trying to get the boat uh back up or damage other people's stuff um that it's just like too much of a liability on the marina here so we're actually not allowed to you know we can't get in the water we can't go do a bunch of different things it's just like not an option um so that's why we've got you know like a certified diving team and all this stuff and we're paying all that money before even giving it a shot ourselves which i wish we could have gave it a shot ourselves but i do understand with the way that insurance works that you know we just not an option on this one so we're gonna so we gotta sit back and uh and let these guys do it but i just learned something uh just now that is very interesting is i thought they were going to float the boat find out what the issue is and stop the issue the, but no, they're they're like, no, we're, we're just floating the boat. Like we're gonna get it up and then it's up to you to kind of find out where the water might be coming from, try and plug it, all that stuff. So I was 100% not ready for that. And um, we didn't bring things to manage this and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, first we gotta figure out what's wrong with it and why it sank. And then we gotta figure out a solution and make sure where you feel comfortable that it won't sink again. Uh, yeah. So dive team has got bags placed at this point. There's a bag down there and a bag down there. We don't have them wrapped around the props quite yet. So we're adding air one to the other. So we're gonna start to see the boat lift a little bit. And then we gotta make sure the bags don't slide across the boat and just slide all the way up to the front because it is kind of shaped like that. So once they get start lifting, get a little pressure on there, a little friction, we're gonna tie them back to a rear cleat or something like that so they don't go anywhere. And this should be the beginning of this thing going up. All right, there's like three, four airbags underneath here, maybe five airbags underneath here. Um, floating the boat slowly but surely the nose is kind of going down a little bit but i think that's as expected and they got it on a winch over there so starting to see it come back up this is a sad view right there it's all covered in mud doesn't mean much though i mean a quick pressure washing could fix a lot of stuff it's tough to know it's tough to tell these guys are doing a great job though they've got thousands and thousands of pounds of bags underneath there uh, lifting up on it and it's going up pretty quick now. A lot more of it above water now. We're doing some math on how many bags they got under there. It's about 9,000 pounds of lifting weight of bags that are under here all being pulled up with air. Uh, and now each bag is going to be all topped off and then uh, we really just got to get this whole railing. Once we get the whole railing out of the water then we can start pumping. So the hope is that we have enough bags to get it. We're getting very very close to the point of where we can pump out. So you can see the back is crested over there and this is almost crested so we're just trying to get any little last bit of flotation we can and then it's pumping time you pump everything and just start pumping the water out of your boat and it'll lift the boat up so fingers crossed we just got to get that out of water we're out of bags completely out of bags so we got no more lifting bags the thought is right now to take one of those giant 
foam blocks that like lift docks and stuff like that. It's got about, I think 3,500 pounds of lift to it and uh, get it under here and, and put it under here. But one way or another, we just gotta get it five more inches in the back here. We are so close. You can see the back is still barely underwater. And I mean, that's really all it takes, but we're close enough that we're starting to get these pumps in, the, in place. We've got three, what they call trash pumps here, small ones, and then the big one running over there. As soon as this thing crests over, it's gonna start to float as long as we get these vents on the side capped off. We have a vent that's down there and a vent that's down there. We gotta cap those off. That'll let us pump out this whole area here. It is now rapidly becoming more of a boat. It's so weird how seemingly like comfortable it is now. It's almost like, feels like you could walk into it. Um, pump it out rapidly there. And then all four of these pumps are pumping it that, that amount. There's quite a lot of water. It's coming off of this thing all at once. Um, so it's coming up. Uh, the diver's working on plugging the, the side vents. Once those side vents get plugged, this thing's gonna pop up really fast there. Then we're gonna open the cabin and pump out the cabin area and then we can worry about the engine area. And then we also get to start to find out where it was leaking from. And coincidentally, that is where I'm gonna leave this video. In the next video, I will let you guys know why the boat sank, which I'm sure many of you wanna know, I wanna know as well. We're gonna find out the cause of the leak that, that made the boat sink. We'll start to figure out why this thing sank and figure out how we're gonna get it out of the water and uh, onto dry land, I think, is the next step. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe so you don't miss it. Please like this video if you like it. And let me know in the comments what you would do. Do we salvage it? Let the insurance company take it? Do we keep it? Do we fix it? Do you want to buy it from me? Let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.